Here is our first panel that we've laid up. We've brought it up on the boat so you can see the shape that we had discussed with the mold where the center line of the panel has some curvature fore and aft but the outside edge is straight fore and aft. That's why we shaped the mold the way we did. Uh, what we're doing now is getting ready to locate the aluminum supports underneath so we can locate the fasteners from above. The panel will get uh, screwed down to the aluminum frame. Uh, then what we're also going to do is finalize the outer shape, radius the corners that you see. Oh, that's beautiful. Then we're going to carve away the foam and backfill the edges and give the edges of the panel a nice radius. The panel has been rough cut to fit. It's up on the boat. We're going to clamp it in place to hold it from moving. And then from the underside, we're going to mark the edges of each one of the aluminum tubes with a piece of tape on both sides of the tube. We're placing the tape every two feet or so because that will be enough marks to get the shape of the tubes down when the panel is on the bench. Mm -hmm. And now we can use the tape marks that we've applied to lay down a single continuous piece of tape that represents the center line of each one of the tubes. So what I told you to do, if you would just listen to me for Christ's sakes. We are using inch and a half wide blue tape to mark the center line of the tube because this width is about the same width as the tube itself. And this gives us a nice clean surface to mark our center lines for each one of the fasteners. We've decided to space each one of the fasteners about 12 inches apart, and we clearly mark each hole at the center of the tape, which represents the center of the frame. Once we've marked for all the fasteners, we're ready to begin drilling. As we drill, we're going to use a piece of plywood on the underside to be sure that the drill does not tear out the laminate as it pokes through the underside of the panel. Once all the holes have been drilled in the panel, we'll use the panel as a guide to locate all the fasteners in the frame up on the boat. We'll drill pilot holes first and then use a tap to create threads in each one of the holes. This will allow us to use machine screws to hold down the panel without the need for nuts on the underside. Before we fasten down the first panel, we need to first finish the edges and paint it but we're also going to use the first panel as a template to mark out the shape on the second panel, which we have just finished laying up. We've placed blue tape down on the second panel to give us a clean surface for marking the edges. We place the first panel on top of the second panel and use it as a template to mark the shape. Because both panels are curved, we're gonna rock the panel to maintain contact as we mark out the edge. Once we have the outline marked on the panel, we can then cut all the edges. We're going to use a skill saw to cut the straight edges down the center line of the panel, and then we're going to use a jigsaw to cut the tighter curved portions of the edges. We're using a thin blade and moving very slowly with the jigsaw to get a very accurate cut. We're also holding a vacuum hose next to the blade to collect the carbon dust from the blade. To finish the edges of the panel, we're going to first router out about a half inch of foam all the way around the perimeter. So now we're going to use some Total Fair filler. This is epoxy-based filler. It has a yellow and a blue component. They're mixed at a one-to-one -one ratio. And they will form a thick paste that will not run. And once they're thoroughly mixed, the, the mixture will turn green because yellow and blue create green. And that also tells you that the two components are, prop are thoroughly mixed with each other. I use the trowel knives to apply the material into the recess. I'm going to leave it a little bit proud and then go back and make one final swipe all along the edge, which will also help push a little bit more material into the recess and leave us with a nice, flat, smooth surface. And then once it dries, we'll sand it down smooth with a longboard, and then we're going to run a router around the perimeter and radius the edge of the laminate as well as some of the total fare. And then hand sand to leave us with a smooth, round surface.